guys welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another day of palette week this week every single video has been themed around palettes eyeshadow just things to do with eyeshadow palettes in general one of my personal favorite categories of makeup so today we are going to be ranking my entire anastasia beverly hills palette collection i do have 10 abh palettes and i don't believe i've ever ranked my ABH palettes on my collection. I just recently posted a ranking video where I ranked all of the palettes that I purchased this year, so if you're interested in checking that video out, I'll leave that link below as well as every single palette week video. And I will try, fingers crossed, to also link my previous palette week. I'm gonna start being better about like making playlists, especially next year, that'll be a goal of mine. But if you guys are interested in seeing how I would rank my ABH palettes, then stay tuned. First, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, I hope you'll consider doing so before you go. I do post videos five days a week, so if, you know, you vibe with me by the end of this video, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go, but other than that, let's just get into the video. Okay, as per usual, we're gonna rank from my least favorite to my absolute favorite. So starting with my least favorite, I have the ABH Riviera palette. This is a palette that I purchased this year, and I was so excited when re this released. I thought I was going to end up loving this palette a lot more than I do. None of the palettes, like, this isn't a quality issue with this palette. This is more so, like, I just don't feel like it's the most cohesive palette. Even, like, the mattes and the shimmers, like, I just feel like it's very hard for me personally to look into this palette and be like, oh, yeah, I know what kind of look I want to create today. Now, I don't dabble with color a whole ton, so that could be part of it, but I just, I don't know. When I first got this, I thought I was going to love it a lot more than I did. The mattes and shimmers perform like typical ABH shadows do. I just struggled to come up with looks with this. I do really like some of the shimmers within this palette, but there's definitely favorite shimmers throughout other palettes that ABH has that I prefer over the shimmers in this palette. So overall, this is just kind of a subpar palette in my opinion and definitely would be my number 10 bottom ranked palette in my entire ABH collection. Coming in at number 9 would be my ABH Prism palette. So I have two things with this palette. One, this is one of the palettes that has a more finicky formula. Like it's a little bit more difficult even than ABH's, like, what am I trying to say? It's a little bit more finicky even than like modern renaissance. I know ABH obviously has very pigmented shadows and therefore you get a lot of kick up, you get a lot of fallout. Um, you get a lot of kick up, you get some fallout, etc. But this is like exceptionally finicky. But I do think that this has some super unique shades in this palette. I love this shade Lucid. I also love the shade Dimension. I think Sphere is also really cool. I love Throne, the shimmery like emerald shade. So I think that there are some really nice shades throughout this palette. I also use the shade Lure quite a bit if I'm doing like a mauve toned look. But I'm typically not reaching into this palette. It's been quite some time since I have reached into this palette as a matter of fact just because Again, this isn't like the most cohesive palette. I do feel a little bit more inspired when I look into this palette than I do when I look into the Riviera palette, but still, my mind doesn't 100% know what I want to do when I reach into this, and with the finicky, that on top of the finicky formula, this would definitely be my number nine. So speaking of finicky formulas, you guys probably know what's coming next. It's going to be Subculture at number eight. I have grown to appreciate this palette a little bit more this past year than I did in years past. I've created some really cool looks that I have loved with this palette, but again, you know, like I know when I go in to this palette, it's going to take me a little extra time. I'm going to have to do my eyes before I do my face, which actually I, I usually do anyway, but it is a more difficult formula to work with. Again, that being said, there are some very unique shades in this palette that I love. I love this shade Electric. My one gripe with this is I feel like you get hard pan on this right away, so you kind of have to scrape and dig every time that you use this shade. I also really love the shade, shade Cube. It has this like holographic purpley pink shift that I think is really, really cool. Um, with this like quad right here, I've created a really really cool look that I loved this past summer and then I just love that this part of the palette just screams fall so 
I do like this palette. Again, I've created some I have created some looks that I really really like. It's just a harder palette to work with, not one that I would reach into if I was in a rush or anything. Uh, so for that reason, I'm going to have to rank this at number eight. Number seven goes to the Norvina palette. I thought that I was going to absolutely love this palette when it released. And the more I've used it, the more I feel like I really don't love it. Like, I feel like I see a lot of people create some beautiful looks with this. And I just never get a look that I really like out of this. I feel like the shimmers in the Norvina palette specifically are a little bit more chunky and have even more fallout than some of the other ABH palettes. And this is another one where I feel like the formula is a little bit more finicky. And with this one, I even feel like those shimmers are a bit finicky. Now, I've still created some looks that I really, really like. But I feel like, for example, this Soul Shade doesn't really perform on the eyes like it looks in the pan. Even this Eccentric Shade, I've struggled to like make this work in the way that I want it to. And I feel like every time I go into this palette, I go in with a vision in mind. And my look just ends up being something completely different. So I've definitely been frustrated at times using this palette. It's not a favorite of mine by any means. I still think that there's some beautiful shades in this. And it's not something that I want to declutter. But do I think you need this? Probably not. Um... Would I repurchase it if I lost, lost this? No. So, I don't know. Not my favorite by ABH, but I still use it from time to time. I feel like it's a little bit easier to use than the subculture and the prism, so that's why I ranked it above those two. But still, I just, I'm super let down by some of those shimmers because I just feel like they're exceptionally chunky. And I just find this to be a little bit of a frustrating palette to work with. Coming in at number six, this is a palette that I really like, but this is very new to my collection. This is the ABH Carly Bible palette, and I really do like this. I think that this has some really fun shades, but it also has some very neutral shades, which makes it a very easy palette to work with. Very wearable. I wasn't originally going to purchase this palette, but I ended up buying it because I really liked the shade Mandala, Libra, and Jody. I think those three are so fun. And then I knew I could create wearable work looks out of the bottom row. So I did decide to pick this up, and I do like it. I'm not mad that I have it in my collection. Do I think it's the most unique palette of all time? No. Definitely other palettes that we'll get into that I would recommend over this one. This one I feel like you're very, if you want to do like a neutral look, you're very limited to like these warmer tone shades. Um, and when I look into this, I, I will be honest, I'm not like the most inspired. Looking into this, it, it's a bit boring with the exception of a couple of them, um, but I still like it. It's still a nice palette and would I repurchase this if I lost this? Probably not, but I like the palette. I just don't love it. Number five is going to go to the original Modern Renaissance. I feel like Modern Ren is what really put ABH eyeshadows on the market. I love this palette. I really, really do. But again, I feel like you're just very limited to warm toned shades when you reach into this. Now, I've created some looks that I absolutely love out of this palette. I've traveled with this palette. I think you can create such beautiful looks with this palette. I think that this works for just about everyone. It's it's an easier palette to use, and I feel like even if you don't have the most artistically creative mind, you can still easily come up with looks out of this palette. Um, I just prefer... I prefer to have the option to not be so limited to like the reds and the very, very warm colors, which is why I'm ranking this at number five and some of the other palettes a little bit higher. But I still do love this palette. I would definitely, this is getting old. I definitely will replace this at some point. Like I like this palette enough to replace it. It's really good. I highly recommend if you like warm shades. I do think that some of these shades are still unique, even with all the saturated warm palettes on the market. I still just feel like this palette just has a uniqueness to it that I can really appreciate. But again, there are just a few palettes from ABH that I prefer over this one. Coming in at number four is going to be my ABH Sultry palette. This is another one that I actually was not going to purchase at first when I saw photos of this online, etc. I thought that this looked like the most boring palette ever, but seeing, seeing it in person, my mind was definitely changed, and then swatching this in person, my mind was like, yep, gonna get that. 
I love this palette. I really do. I think that the shimmers in here are absolutely stunning. I would buy this palette again just for the shimmers. I love this cyborg shade. I just think it's so unique. It looks like just like a straight silver shimmer in the pan, but on the eyes, it's almost more like a taupe shade. Like it, it, it almost like transforms to match whatever look that you have. I love this cool tone matte shade twig. I think it's beautiful dystopian. I really like, I love rose quartz. I just really like just about everything out of this palette. I would probably trade the shade fresh, which is just like an all over lidge setting shade for maybe another shimmer or another cool toned matte. And then I would personally get rid of the shade bloom. I just think it just doesn't really have a place in my opinion in this palette. And the shade Slate, this gray shade, I just don't use gray matte shades like ever. I've used this a couple of times and I just find it for me a little bit hard to work with just because I don't ever use grays. Um, so I struggle with that one just a little bit, but everything else about this palette I truly do love. I know that this was limited edition. I think you can still get it on the ABH website, but I think that is the only place that you can get it, which is a bummer because this is something where if I lost this, I would replace it. I really love this. It's one of my favorite cooler toned eyeshadow palettes within my collection, and I think it is a really nice palette, especially if you are a cool toned loving gal. Coming in at number three is a palette that you can no longer get, so sorry, um, but it is the ABH Master Palette by Mario. I continue to love this palette. Even, like, I've had this for so long, I feel like, and I still love this palette. I still get excited to use this palette. I love reaching into this palette. This Lula shade is probably my favorite cool-toned transition shade within my entire collection. I am going to be heartbroken when I use this shade up. I do have a pan on it right now. I still have quite a bit of the shade left, but I love that shade. It's so easy to just do, like, a one eyeshadow and done with this. It's just, like, my perfect perfect transition shade and I love it. I just love that with this one I feel like you're left with some warm tone options as well as some like neutral to cool tone options. I really like that you have these just fun like muted pops of color. It's just an awesome palette. It makes me so sad that you can't get this anymore because like I said this is still a favorite, ugh, a favorite of mine to this day. And this is another one too that I almost did not buy but thank goodness I got it. Okay. So we're down to one and two, and I, my number two, I think probably would work better for more people. Like, I feel like it would be more people's number one, but you got to hear me out on this. So number two used to be my number one. It is the ABH Soft Glam Palette, and you guys, I freaking love this palette. I do. This is an incredible palette. It is, again, more on the warm tone side, but you do have some more, like, neutral shades down here. I absolutely love this, like, cranberry, cranberry red shade. Not even, like, cranberry. It's just, like, a deep red shade. It's in the shade Mulberry. One of my favorite shadows in my collection. I love the shimmers in this. This palette has gotten so much love for me. I take this traveling with me all the stinking time. And I feel like this palette is one that would work for so many people. And like I said, this is probably a better option for most people than what I'm about to talk about as my number one. And this was my number one palette of all my ABH palettes until I purchased the ABH Jackie palette. And this just stole my heart. I love this one because I love the mattes that they selected for the like browns I love that they selected matte browns is what I'm trying to say but it's the shimmers in here too that just like really sold stole steal steal the show for me sponsored love this shade it's like a shifty green red shade it's so beautiful like so stunning I love the shade Zahn Soleil just some really really beautiful shimmery shades this shade Wigglies? I don't know how to pronounce that, but this red shimmery shade is absolutely beautiful all over the lid to do like a really smoldering, smoky eye. I just absolutely love it. Lituation is a really cool, like cool toned, like purple brownie taupe. I don't even know how to describe this shade. Just very unique. I just feel like this is a really unique palette. I feel inspired every time I open this. 
I feel like when I reach into this, I can create looks that I can easily wear to work, and then I can add my pops of color if I'm like going out on the weekend. This is an easy one to travel with. This would be great for travel, actually, I think. Because this would be a great palette to travel with as well because you're offered neutral options, but then you have your fun pops, so it's kind of like an all-encompassing palette. I just absolutely love this palette. I do think that you can still get this palette. Highly recommend this. Again, I feel like this one might be more wearable for more people, so I mean, I do recommend both of these. Like, I absolutely love both of these, but if I had to choose only one that I could keep, I would keep this palette just because I feel like it is truly so unique. Just such a gem. So, that is my ranking of all 10 of my ABH palettes. If you guys own ABH palettes, I would love to hear your favorites in the way that you would rank all the ones that you've tried down below. Do you agree with me? Do you disagree? Is subculture? Like, I would just love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for sticking around to watch this video, and I'll catch you in tomorrow's. Bye!